Hello, my name is Santi Lemang, and in this video I want to talk about default, mandatory and read-only logic. So when you work with the application, you might have seen um, that some fields are read-only and some fields um, are mandatory. Mandatory fields have this little star behind the name. So when you create a new entry, you have to enter a value here, otherwise you cannot save the entry. And when you enter it, then you can save it. Most of the mandatory fields have a not null constraint in the database. But sometimes you don't want to have a not null constraint in the database, but you still want that the user have to enter something based on uh, other fields values in the same um, yeah, window or and other tabs of the same window. Uh, also, when you create a new entry, yeah, you could provide a default value. For example, if your company always uses the same product category for uh, new products, then you could provide this category as the default value. And sometimes you don't want a user to be able to change an entry if a value of another field has a certain value. So how can you do this? Yeah, first you have to open table and column and search the table you want to use. And in another video I created this table which I will use now. I go to the sub tab and here I go to column. Now I select the column I want to modify and I use the description column here. And here you have the fields for default logic, um, read-only logic, and mandatory logic. So in my default logic, for example, um, I want to use the name of my parent tab. If you wonder what you can put in these fields, then you can select them from AD column to get an idea of what other um, windows use in them. You can either provide a number for number fields, a string as plain text or in this up commas, or you can use context variables and even selects are possible. To use a select, you have to um, type in add SQL equals and here you can enter the select, but make sure you select only one value from the table. For example, here I could select value from m product where m product id equals and here I'm even able to use a context variable in my SQL. So what this will do in my parent tab I have a column m product id and when I open the window and select an entry the m product id from this entry will be written to the context. And when I create a new entry in my um, child tab, then I can um, select the value from m product, which is the search key, and in my where clause I can use the m product ID from the parent tab. And then this value will be written into my field. But I don't want this here. Um, in my child tab I have a name field. And in my parent tab, I also have a name field. So now I want to use the name field of the parent tab. And to do this, I can do the following. Type in add, name add. This um, context variable will be the name field from the same tab, but I want from the parent tab. So I can type in the tab number followed by a pi and now it will take the name field from the same window but from the tab number 0 and the first tab, the 0 tab in my window is my main tab so I will just save this and show you open the window and as you can see here the name is test2 <coughs> when I go to my sub tab and create a new entry then it uses the name field from my parent tab and write test2 to this field.
Okay, now to the read-only logic. The read-only logic is a little bit different to the default logic and basically the same as the mandatory logic. And here you can have an expression or um, different expressions connected by a logic um, yeah, to check for certain values in the same window or in the context. You basically can use all context variables, which you can find here when you click on the item PR icon, go to arrows and view. Then you get a list of all the context variables here. There are some global variables, which have a hashtag in their name, and to use them, you would um, type in add hashtag ad username add, and you have the window uh, context variables. And you can determine if it's a window um, context variable, if it has a number, this is the window number, the tab number, and the name of the field. The um, numbers here, they are not the AD window ID or the AD tab ID, but the window number in order uh, in which you open windows. So if you open the first window, after you logged in, then it gets the 1, the second window you open gets the 2, and in these windows uh, the tabs also have numbers. The first tab is the 0, the second tab is the 1, and if you take a look at window tab and field and open a window you like, then you see this window only has one tab, so this is tab 0. If you have a window with um, several tabs, like this one, then this is 0 and this is 1. Yeah, and so you can um, use fields from other tab levels in the default logic, but not in the read-only logic. Here it's a little bit different, here you only can use um, context variables. Um, oh, okay, also you can use some um, context variables from parent tabs, of course, like the name here. Um, so what I now want to do is in my custom window here in my sub tab I want to make this field um, read only if this or this field has test in it or if the parent tab has no product selected so how to do this in the read only logic field I type in the value field, which is the search key field from my subtab, and then this, if this equals test, or if the name field equals test. And now I also want to check um, yeah, if one of these fields is test and if the um, product from the parent tab is zero. So I can connect it with an end. Save this entry. And as you can see now, the field is read-only. If I change these two fields and save it, then it's uh, not read-only anymore. Um, this field is empty, and if uh, a number field in item here is empty, that means uh, in the context there's written a zero. So if I now make one of these two fields test again, then you see it's still read-only, but as soon as both of the fields are not test anymore, I can write something here. And this is because um, the first two um, are treated as one um, expression, because they are connected with an end, and the last one is uh, with an OR, they are connected with an OR, and the last one is connected with an end. 
So we treat this as there would be um, brackets here. But unfortunately, I believe you cannot use brackets here. So don't make these read-only logics too complex. Otherwise, it could um, could ha happen that something other happens than you would have expected. It's not like um, expressions in programming languages. Okay, now the mandatory logic. This has the same syntax as the read-only logic. So for example, if I have uh, no product ID, then I want my field to be mandatory. But first let me remove this. Oh no, I, it can stay in it. It should still get the star. So, cache reset, open the window, go to my subtab. And as you can see, since I have no product selected, it has the star. Now if I change the role to some client where I can have products, I can now create a new entry. select the product save this go to my subtab and as you see now the description field is not mandatory anymore and if the field is empty then it is mandatory. Let's take a look at the database for some examples which you could use in the code. And as you see here, most of them are really simple. If value of C order ID is not zero or if value of C charge ID is not zero, you can also put um, yeah, this makes no sense. And this is also every time true, so that also makes no sense. Yeah, but most of the time you want to place uh, context variables and check if they fit a certain value. This, for example, is if it's um, not an empty string. Uh, yeah, this is my example here. And the same goes for the mandatory logic you check if a uh, given field in the context has a certain value and based on this you either make this field mandatory or not. Yeah, I hope this video helps you and I see you in the next video.